Hey guys, good morning and thanks for watching Morning Line. Today we are with Josh Horn to talk about Social Security. So if you have any questions, feel free to call the number on your screen. That is 615-737+. I promise we will get to the calls already. So, hey Terry, thank you so much for holding. What's your question? Hi, um, a gentleman a couple calls back was talking about how he had worked for 25 years on a job and he got hurt, I think you said, on the job. So then he said something about his employer wanted to put him on disability. I think that's what he said. But at any rate, I, it brought up the question in my mind, if in fact you get hurt on the job, wouldn't you be disqualified for Social Security? You'd have to apply for workman's comp. Well, actually, no. Uh, you can actually apply for both, and in, cer in some states, the workers' compensation offsets Social Security, and in some states, it's the other way around. So we are very interested in workers' compensation, and if you're approved, we have to we have to put that information in to make sure that you don't get overpaid because sometimes there's an offset, but it doesn't doesn't keep you from applying for both. And so oftentimes we have folks come in who are also applying for workers' comp to see if they can also get disability. Is that off? Uh, is that kind of uh, frequent? Yeah, I mean it's it's fairly frequent because uh, it, you know getting the sometimes getting the workers' compensation information is a little bit challenging, or you know we have to make sure that we get that on the record and as soon as possible. Like I said, because if it's depending on the state and the circumstances, if if we're supposed to maybe hold back three hundred dollars of your Social Security to compensate for the workers' compensation and we don't do that, you can get overpaid. So we try very hard to make sure that we have all the workers' compensation information. So anybody out there that's listening who may be filing for workers' comp and then also wanting to file for Social Security, make sure that we have that information uh, up front. But no, it does not keep you from, from, from self, uh, applying for Social Security. It's two different programs. Wow. Hey, Terry, good question, uh, by the way. Hey, John, good morning. What is your question? My question is, I got a friend that got hurt on a job over three years ago and they was placed on long-term disability. Then all of a sudden, they cut out the long-term disability and they are not able to draw their social security. They've been waiting for a, a trial, or if you'd speak, uh, on, to see whether they would get their disability, uh, social security disability, and they have two small children. Uh, raising them by themselves with no supplement income. Well, what what would you do on a on a situation like this? Yeah, and and we've been kind of talking a little bit about workers' comp, mm -hmm. and again, that really doesn't have anything to do with Social Security. Those are two different programs and two different application procedures. But as far as Social Security. Uh, what you're talking about is, is a hearing and waiting for the hearing with the administrative law judge. And so for those of you who may not be familiar with that process, uh, after you apply for disability, if you're denied for any reason, you do have uh, 60 days to, uh, to appeal your decision, to file for an appeal. The first level of appeal is actually reconsideration to where you send in and say, hey, look, I disagree with the decision. Either they didn't consider all my medical records or, the, or I, I don't think that they considered how sick I really am or they forgot to consider that I also have diabetes or whatever else it is. And you can send that in and, the, and a different examiner will take a look at your case at the disability office. But if you're denied at that level, again, you can send it in for a hearing. And again, you have 60 days to do that. Send it in for a hearing before an administrative law judge. And unfortunately, you know, that can take a little while for you to get on the on the docket on the schedule for the judge to speak with you and then but once you once you are on on the schedule you'll go in and you actually speak face to face with the judge and can appeal your decision at that point it sounds like your friend who uh, had applied for or had been injured on the job that's a, apparently what level he's at and so at that point he needs to make sure that he's you know gets on the schedule and uh, and goes before the the judge at that point all right thank you for that question hey Joni thank you for uh, holding what is yours I have two questions. One, I will be 65 years old in October, and my husband is a year younger, so I'm still covered under his medical insurance. Do I have to take Medicare when I turn 65? What is your second question? My second question is, do I have to pay income tax on my Social Security benefits? 
Good question. So I'll start with the first, the second question first. Uh, as far as your income tax, that is a kind of more of an IRS question, but basically it depends on what your uh, adjusted gross income is. So if you're fi married and filing jointly and it's over about thirty-four thousand uh, dollars, then oftentimes you do have to pay taxes on at least some of your Social Security benefits. Um, that's kind of the, the the general rules, but but it kind of depends on how much your adjusted gross income is. Um, on your first question. Uh, no, you do not have to take your Medicare Part B if your uh, husband or, or spouse is covered under a group health insurance that's based on work. And so you want to go ahead and file for Part A because that that's free, so you might as well go ahead and, and get it and, and uh, have that extra coverage. But the Part B is, uh, you know, it, it, it has a monthly premium. I think it's $134 a month this year. Uh, that you would have to pay, but for anybody who is still working and covered under a group health insurance or their spouse is still working and covered under a group health uh, plan, uh, you, don't, you can delay taking that until they come off of that group health plan, but it's, it's, it's both working and covered under that group health plan. A lot of questions on that? Do you normally? We do. We do have a lot of questions on that, and we deal with that day in and day out because, uh, especially if it's either you're turning age 65, or remember you get Medicare after drawing uh, two years worth of disability benefits. It's kind of the same scenario. Mm -hmm. uh, and so at that point, your spouse may be working, uh, or you know, folks who are turning 65 may still be working, and they say, "Hey, I don't want my monthly benefits yet. I'm just a little bit confused about this Medicare." Well, if you're still working and you're covered under a group health plan, you may not want to be. Uh, you know, spending that $134 every month for the prescription for the uh, uh, Part B plan. All right, all right, Thomas. Thank you for calling. What's your question? Hey, Thomas. Good morning. What's your question? Hey, good morning. How y'all doing? I'm doing well, thank you. I was told by a veteran that's come, just come back from uh, Afghanistan. If you were in the military from 1957 to 2001, that you could draw extra Social Security. Um, is that correct? Or, but you would have to ask for it. You'd have to request it. Well, actually, uh, pretty much anymore, all the military pay and, and military credits and everything else is all automatically put into Social Security records. Uh, back in the 40s, when folks had military service in the 40s, a lot of times we would have to go in and manually add the credit uh, before we process that. But we really, you know, we've kind of worked ourselves out of that time period to where now if it's 50s and 60s and 70s uh, that, are, that are retiring or drawing, uh, those benefits are already put into the Social Security, so there's really no other extra benefits. That's a very interesting question. Is, is there something else that, as far as veterans, they should know about when it comes to the money? Not, not from Social Security. Now, okay. the VA has several different programs out there, and of course, you, you know, you'd want to talk to them about any additional uh, benefits or, or, or supplemental plans and things like that. But as far as Social Security, uh, your, your military credit's already built into the system, and it, you know, just like uh, you know, work. So, all right, Sherry. Sherry, thanks for holding. What's your question? Hey Sherry, good morning. You there? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> hey, what's your uh, what's your question? Yeah, uh, I have MS. I'm 56 years old, and you know how high the cost of living is. Why is it that they're only treating us like seven hundred and fifty dollars a month? I can't even live on that. I have to uh, take care of what bills I can and do without other things. Mm -hmm. Why, I, you know, and they tell me because it's a five year gap in my in, uh, work record, but I just don't think it's true. Are you drawing social security benefits or SSI benefits? SSI. Okay, yeah, that's what it sounded like. So SSI is based on the poverty level, the national poverty level. So it doesn't necessarily take into consideration whether you live in Nashville or you know somewhere more rural or somewhere where the cost of living may be uh, cheaper. Unfortunately, it just takes into the consideration the national poverty level, and that's basically what the SSI benefit amount is based on. And it goes up just a little bit every year based on the cost of living adjustment. Now you referred to your work record, and so what happens, unfortunately, a lot of times is when folks apply for benefits, um, and they apply for. Typically, we have them apply for both, both the SSI and the Social Security. Uh, and if, and for Social Security disability, you have to have worked five out of the last ten years, 
And that you know gets a lot of folks who may have worked for 10, 15, 20 years, and then they may have taken off to take care of kids, they may have taken off to take care of grandkids, they may have taken off because they were tired of working, you know, they may have taken off for a variety of reasons, and then something happens and they become disabled, well, they haven't paid in that five out of the last 10 year rule, and so they're not eligible for the Social Security disability anymore, unfortunately. Uh, and, and that's when we, a lot of times, look at the, social, the SSI program. All right, guys, if you do have any other questions, 615-737-PLUS, we have about half an hour left in this program. Program. For those calling in, just wait and we'll get to you in just a moment. More of Morning Line after the break. This is a Storm 5 HD weather.